Back in the ye good old olden times of actually still currently right now, this very second, in some places in the West even, for some reason that I don't understand, a lot of people believed that you can get demons inside of your body, they would enter your body and make you do weird things. You suddenly into maiming and killing people? Demon. You scared of the sky? Demon. You think all of your loved ones have been replaced by corpses? Demon. You just hurl abuse at everyone you meet? Beans. I'm just kidding, it's a demon. Nowadays, we say antisocial personality disorder, anxiety disorder, Paranoid Schizophrenia, Tourette Syndrome. But back in the day, it was all demons, and you know what? They were right. That doesn't mean that modern psychology is wrong. There is, as a matter of fact, no such thing as demons, but they were trying to classify the very same things that we are trying to classify, just more incorrectly. And if you think about it, demons are very evocative of mental disorders. It makes sense to depict them that way because they kind of feel that way, even when you know that that's not actually where they're coming from. I have a couple mental disorders, most of them very mild, and it does very often feel like there is an entity in my head just trying to fuck with my mental state. I mean, Jesus, uh, Tourette syndrome, for instance, I get these uncontrollable urges to jerk sometimes. <laughs> like shit like this, which right now I'm doing it on purpose, but usually I'm not doing it on purpose when I do it. There's just someone hooked into the line that sends the commands to do this down there and they control very poorly some parts of my urge to move certain parts of my body, but they're still hooked into that line. With, like, lethargic depression, it often feels like you're just carrying around an extra person inside your soul. Intrusive thoughts, someone's always there just whispering wordlessly ideas into your mind and you really just would like that person to shut the fuck up for a minute. And some people make that happen because they want the demon to die more than they themselves want to be alive. I recently did a video on like low tier mental illness where I talked about how you probably have some symptoms of some mental disorder and really it doesn't do much. It's just mostly a personality quirk that you have to live with. I'm gonna take this a step further today and say that everybody has a demon too. You can't actually see that, but the I wrote that demon differently when I wrote the script right over there. So now it's not demon, but like diamond. That's that kind of way of writing the demon, which is a lot more old fashioned and is the term that I personally prefer when referring to like the internal mental demons that we all struggle with. It's just a nice distinction to make between like all controlling entities from hell and a part of your subconscious doing a thing because the latter actually exists. Plus, in computers, daemons are background processes that you don't control as an end user, so it's a doubly good analogy. No matter who you are, if you are a human or human comparable entity, you have a demon sitting somewhere in your subconscious. I don't care if you're a mentally healthy person with the perfect life somewhere in there, is a little demon. And not all demons are made equal, obviously. A lot of them are mostly benign, maybe even docile, but all of them have at least that one thing that sets them off and gives them power. You know, that one kind of situation that gives you a very intense negative emotional reaction. That one insecurity, that one thing that just makes you mad or sad because it reminds you of someone or something. Maybe you have a short temper, or a fear to be with a person or without, or a, a chain of judgmental associations when you see certain kinds of people. They're not qualities that you're proud of, at least you shouldn't be, but they are there in your subconscious at exactly the spot where the demon sits with its switchboard. Some demons have like one lever on there and they can have control over one individual thing in a very binary way and that's it. Others have one of them massive DJ mixing stations 
that where they, they're really cool, right? You, you can have different configurations for all the different sliders, hundreds of them. You just put in a number and it just loads a different configuration. And it's also hooked up to a laptop that is hooked up to the internet. And it's also hooked up to the light machine and the fog machine and everything in the club. Some demons sit under some leaky pipe in the back recesses of your subconscious where they can play around with the metal and others sit in the heart of the command center of your subconscious, sometimes even in the captain's chair. No matter who our demons are, it is easy to fall into the trap of believing that we are defined by them, that they are a part of the whole of us that is indistinguishable from it, that they are not a fault but an element of the system working as intended. Because demons are so deceptive and slippery, it's very easy to think that this is just the person that I am. These negative qualities define me and thus I cannot change them. Sometimes we will make them a core part of our identity, take pride in them even. There's going to be people who are quick to proclaim that they are short-tempered or they are intolerant or they are short-sighted or they are always afraid or maybe they are bossy and intellectually they might know that those things are not positive qualities and they might see them as negative qualities in other people that they meet but for them they are so interwoven with who they are their identity and their personality that they can no longer distinguish themselves from the demon and obviously the demon is part of you you can't not have it that's not how that works it's fine and and normal to have a demon and it's also fine and normal to not always be winning every battle against it it's fine to be a flawed person but it doesn't serve us at all to believe that we are defined by our demons accentuating those negative qualities for the comfort that it gives us to believe that we are just assholes because if we believe that and if we stick to the negative qualities that we have, we won't be disappointing ourselves when we try to be better and fail. We can just let our demons win every single time, not even putting up a defense against them so we are spared the shame of a battle lost. But that's not a good way to live your life. You don't have to live your life that way. You are stronger than that. Because though it is very easy for us to accept that there is a demon living inside of every single one of us, for some reason, it is much more difficult to accept that there is also an angel living in every single one of us. I could be your angel or your devil. <laughs> Ultimately, no matter how much power your demon has or how much power you've given your demon willingly, you are still the ultimate executive administrator of your conscious mind. And your conscious mind has a lot more power over your subconscious mind than you might believe. At the end of the day, you are the person making the decisions. You have the power to be in charge which can be extremely exhausting if most of what you have to do all day is do battle against a roided up demon. But you can be supported in doing that by therapy or medication, by, you know, weakening your demon and learning where its weak spots are in battle, but you can also rely on your angel. Your angel is the best parts of you in your subconscious. It is the exact same thing as the demon, except the exact opposite of the demon. Some people like to call it the inner self, the guardian spirit. It doesn't really matter. It's the best version of you that is made up of all the positive qualities that you have as much as the demon is made up of all the negative ones. And for a lot of us, it's easy to give our demon power, but difficult to give our angel power, even if the latter would be much better for us. Because it's a lot easier to believe that we are bad than it is to believe that we are good. That is how much we are in the grip of our demon. And obviously, objectively, we are both good and bad, we are complex characters and all that, but you can choose to give more power to your angel and take away power from your demon. And your angel won't just fight alongside you as a positive incarnation of your subconscious mind, it will also protect and nurture you with love. Whenever you lose the battle against your demon, your angel will be there to forgive you and to nurture you 
and to give you the energy to go back in there and kick that demon's ass because your angel is fueled by self-love as much as the demon is fueled by self-hatred. That's what it is ultimately, it's self-love and self-respect. If self-love sounds narcissistic to you, welcome to the clubhouse. You are not alone in being completely wrong about that. Self-love is essential for you. It is something that you need and it is something that you deserve. It's something that you can have too much of, but like the overwhelming majority of people, you probably don't. In fact, your lack of self-love is probably why you let the demon win all the time. You can't be expected to fight it without a proper fuel source. Who could blame you for that? But how do you get self-love if you don't have any? Well, it's fundamentally about accepting yourself and forgiving yourself for being a flawed person because it really is not your fault. For most of us, whenever the demon wins, we blame ourselves for it. We are ashamed, we talk down to ourselves, tell ourselves how shit we are, and that we should have won. It's the demon, and now it's won again, and it's our fault. And this happens subconsciously, as well as consciously. The subconscious will give the impulse for this kind of thinking. This kind of thinking comes from the subconscious because obviously since the demon is fueled by self-hatred, it will try to make its own fuel, which, by the way, the angel will also try to do. Make its own fuel, that is. Not, the fuel is self-love, not self-hatred. The angel won't make self-hatred. Just to make that clear. <laughs> but there's really no shame in losing a battle or two against your demon. It knows literally all of your weaknesses. It is very good at keeping you captive. Try to see yourself from an outside perspective. You are the victim here. You are the one who has been wronged by a powerful, compelling force. There's only so much you can do, and it is fine that there is a limit to how much you can do. And it is also fine if you don't always do everything that you can do, because sometimes it's smarter to conserve your energy. It happens to the best of us, and the sooner you learn to forgive yourself for that, the sooner your angel will grow more powerful. This is also true for forgiving yourself for sometimes not forgiving yourself. There's nothing wrong with being the way you are, and your inner angel forgives you. Of course, you could always be stronger, more resilient, more perceptive, more empathetic, sure, but the way that you are now is still already fine. You will never be a finished person, a perfect thing, the thing that you try to aspire to, someone who has reached all of their potential. The mountain just keeps on going up and up and up forever. And just because you could be higher doesn't mean you're not already pretty high up there. And even if you don't feel like you're particularly high up the mountain, accepting the place where you are and accepting the fact that it is fine to be where you are and there is nothing wrong with you for being where you are will empower you to go farther up that mountain. Th this seems a bit counterintuitive to some people because if I accept my flaws and I go, well, no, I'm fine, won't I then lose the motivation to get rid of my flaws and negative qualities because after all, I will have accepted them. But that is not how that works. Accepting your flaws, all that it does is take away power from them and giving it to you. You don't have to like them, you just have to accept they're there. And if you do that, you also have the power to forgive yourself for them. It empowers your angel and it weakens your demon simply because of conscious decisions that you make. Take your time, because this can be a long process. But it's gonna feel very good. Learn to love yourself the way you are. That will smoothly, before you even know it, give you the power to become that better person that you've always wanted to be. And it'll help tremendously in cutting away most of the pain you have in your life most of the time. Personally, I believe in you. And so does your angel, who, even though you may not have noticed them before this video, you can notice them now, fluttering around your subconscious, growing with power, just waiting for an opportunity to support you. Thank you very much for watching this almost spiritual video, wherein obviously everything that I said is, is like more allegorical, but it does help a lot visualizing things that way. Like, comment, subscribe, do all the things, share this 
to your relevant communities, but do not spam them. Consider supporting me on Patreon or Subscribestar, maybe buying some of my merchandise or my short story collection. I don't know why I did that. And in that spirit, take care of yourself, love yourself, forgive yourself, and understand that really most of the things that are wrong with you, it's not your fault. And see you around, cunts.